Hi, I'm Jacob Butcherf. This is the 2019 USBC Masters bowling title match against Michael Holloman. And uh, if you guys know me, like, uh, it is a blue moon if I ever finish on the right lane. But as you can see from that first shot, it was definitely a mystery. I was still having second guesses on what to even do on this left lane. So just go Brooklyn. Michael Amin is also one of my good friends. He bowled phenomenal all week. First TV show. I know he came up just short, short of making the show in Detroit on the Cheetah show. I believe it was, yeah, it was the Cheetah show. He came up just short. In the running for Rookie of the Year as well. And this was kind of like a, this was a blast from the past. Uh, this, we were at Gold Coast, which is one of the centers I grew up in, where I bowled my very first ever pattern league. And also Michael goes to the face. Uh, like I said, this, this left lane got, left lane got tricky, so it, at least if I can try to figure figure out something and have Michael struggle, then I knew it was going to be a cakewalk for my first major. Uh, just came off second place at the World Championships against Jason Belmonte. So th at, at this time, three majors where I finished second. I thought he made that as soon as he let go of it. Very big crowd out there. Uh, I know Chris Sloan, Mitch Hupe, and also Michael were making their first TV shows. Jake Peters, who's a local out there, and, and Henderson, he also made the show. So it was a big, it was a very nice crowd out there. Uh, had some crew from the Portland, Maine actually go out there and watch. It was pretty nice to see him out there because the following week is when we started the PBA playoffs. This show was a huge one for Michael, Mitch, and Chris Sloan. If they would have gotten, I believe if Michael would have beat me, he would have ended up making the playoffs, but he came up just short. Jake needed to finish second or better to make the playoffs, and Chris and Mitch, I think, also needed to win to make the playoffs. So it was a really big twist for the playoffs for all those guys. But at the same time, I was also there to win my first major. There's the, all the Bopo crew. Charlie Mitchell does a great job out there at Bayside Bowl. Very nice crowd out there. Had a lot of family and friends from Arizona. All those guys out there uh, came out to support. Can't thank him enough for that. When I bowled against Michael in the match to determine the top seed, also threw quite a bit of surface to kind of get him off of a spot that I knew he wouldn't be comfortable with. So sometimes when you're bowling against lefties, the best way to do it is play a little defense as well. And defense is try to get them out of their comfort zone, what they've been doing all week. I know Michael was bowling really good, playing up the gutter for most of it. But about game, about the end of game two and game three, I kind of forced him out of playing in that zone, so I knew he was going to be in a little bit of a struggle spot. I've also bowled quite a bit of doubles with Michael. He, like I said, very, very passionate, very competitive. Like 
like the stat track showed in something prior it was his first masters as well so it was awesome to see him make the show for f his first ever masters lots of my matches that you can see on the left uh can't i had some very interesting matches uh Patrick Gerard, I needed a double in the tent to beat him, ended up doing that. Cortez Shank, who is actually uh, one of the guys I bowled juniors with growing up. Very talented young bowler. He's, I would say he's going to be one of the up and coming stars. Still very young kid. He ended up actually busting open his thumb when I was bowling against him. He had to throw it straight at the head pin, and he ended up throwing a six bagger to force me to mark in the 10th frame, and I almost ended up costing that, but ended up sparing and moved on to the next day where I bowled Rhino and that was right at the time where I woke up and I was in probably the worst pain of my life. Uh, up at 5.30 in the morning, I could barely get up. I uh, ended up trying to just walk around and it was to the point where I needed to have someone go out and get me something because I could barely walk or bend over. And the bowling against Rhino, the first round of match play, and I had zero feel on my back. Yep, there's a stat, finished fifth, just short of making the Cheetah show. He's pretty much locked in on this right lane, so... Plan didn't execute well for me bowling on the right lane, but I knew he was struggling on the left lane, so... Ended up having him finish on the lane that I knew he was going to struggle on was definitely a huge factor in this match. Michael's lofting as well, and trips to six, so. One thing with Michael, too, is that he's very good at lofting, and normally you don't see that from many lefties, but I would call it like, I would actually compare him a little bit similar to Jason Couch, one of those lefties that I knew can get pretty deep and give it a little loft, a little air time. I would say he's pretty close to Jason Couch. That shot, I just kind of fell off of it. I didn't really, didn't really grab it too much at the bottom. Well, that cuts a nice break for Michael because it, it, it kind of keeps him in the ball game. Now that he's working on a double, Jacob didn't double up there. Don't want to jinx anything here. But, oh, you were gonna, you're gonna bring that up? The spare conversion's a bit of a problem for Jacob this season. Yeah, but hope. Make the spare, just go back to the left lane. I knew pretty much I ended up figuring it out on the left lane. It's like when you're practicing, you strike on one lane, you can't figure it out when you bowl the actual match. Three career second place finishes in majors, yep. U.S. Opens were a little harder to swallow than the World Championships, unfortunately. Little strike track. Michael and I were pretty much in the same part of the lane. Michael is a little further left. I knew he was locked in on the right lane, so 
I had to keep it going and figure out something on the right lane for the next shot. Michael Soren, we had a lot of your thing going down the lane <laughs> on this major as well. I know Mitch was throwing a purple hammer, or Jake Peters threw a purple hammer, or Michael threw a purple, I threw a black hammer. This I thought was the best shot I threw in the game, and the wiggle nine pin. His brother Jonathan was just sitting there in disbelief. Probably one of the hardest nine pins I've seen. Hope Randy was watching because that's his eight pin right there. That's the wiggler. Still talk every now and every now and then. One thing we just like to give him grief for is that nine pin. Can't throw a much better shot than that. And even just for me standing there, it's like even feeling frustrated for him at that time because it's like he just finally figured out that lane and he didn't strike. Another shot I didn't really throw the best, uh, double wood. And the spare's not exactly easy when you're bowling on a very difficult master's pattern. Ninth frame was probably the best shot I threw in this whole game because I knew no matter what I would force Michael to get at least a three bagger to force him or to force me to get the first in the tenth. And for me, I knew he was locked in on the right lane, and he finally figured out the left lane with a bad break. So. And this shot, I think he just, he pulled it and he grabbed it. And this is an, ex I think this is one of the hardest spares on the planet. For me, I normally just shoot straight in now. There's no point in hooking it. I know Michael can hook at it and he covered up very nice. And this shot, I just knew he just overthrew it. Jacob Buttrup, congratulations. Yep. Congrats, young man, you deserve it. Now you're looking live. USB 
at that moment too is Sean just kind of taps, or Ryan, my ball rep, just taps you on the shoulder and just goes, you need to ride to me anymore, kid. As I'm making it. There's a shot he's looking for in that lane. Send a message to the field. You're not going anywhere down the road. Let's step aside now because it's this man's show. Michael Bold, amazing all week. Obviously got to the to or to the match where we bowled for the one two seed. And celebrating your first major. Actually, I just threw it because I was just like, I just wanted to keep on the lane and